Welcome. It's the 27th of April, and you're listening to Beyond Bitcoin, where we talk to the people developing, using, or just thinking about the next generation of cryptocurrency. Today, Nikolai Mushigyan of Invictus Innovation steps back from the anvil to explain distributed domain name services. Nikolai studied computer science and mathematics at Carnegie Mellon University and is developing his own distributed domain name service called .p2p. Great to have you with us here today, Nikolai. So you're affiliated with Invictus Innovations, correct? Uh, that's correct. Technically, uh, I have a developer grant from BitShares.org is my official relationship. Right now, there's a huge buzz around the idea of a decentralized internet and distributed domain name service. Do you think this is a technology whose time has really come with the advent of the blockchain? Sort of. So uh, uh, people have only recently sort of become security aware and privacy aware. Um, and one of the biggest problems with the current internet infrastructure is our domain name system. Um, so the biggest Probably the most pressing issue is the fact that the uh, whole certificate authority setup uh, is sort of an artifact of the old way of having to architecture distributed systems without, you know, where, where this trust problem wasn't solved. Um, but now, due to the fact that that's sort of a vulnerable point uh, for, uh, let's say, some spy agencies to compromise your communication channels and listen in. So there's some pent up demand for uh, being able to resolve names into IPs and resolve and have um, a trusted SSL certificate to connect to that IP uh, without needing centralized hierarchical organizations to sort of tell you what's true. Well, given that there's a clear need, are there any other approaches that you're aware of? I think there have been uh, some attempts in the past to do decentralized DNS that aren't based on blockchains. To be honest, I am not very familiar with those. I, I am familiar with uh, other attempts to use blockchains to do decentralized DNS, though. Um, so the best example, the, the most well-known one, is probably uh, Namecoin and .bit. I think Ethereum is also going to have decentralized DNS. And practically any blockchain uh, 2.0 technology like the DNS is like one of the simplest possible applications. I'd say it's simpler even than having coins and shares. It's just, you know, uh, storing a name and a value in a blockchain. Trivial for someone like yourself, I'm sure. Um, being so simple, what do you think is going to drive one of these, uh, these projects to be successful over the others? Right. So uh, this, is an in this is like where it gets interesting because... Uh, because it's such an easy thing to do, every single Bitcoin 2.0 project is going to be doing it. So then uh, it's more interesting to like uh, think about how these projects are different from each other. So the main idea behind .p2p and the whole BitShares DNS project is that we're incorporating the decentralized autonomous company metaphor. We're uh, using uh, that metaphor as guidance for designing the blockchain and designing the relationship of the crypto equity to the uh, services that the blockchain provides uh, in a way that makes the network sustainable in the long run. And what that means is that it simply consumes more than it produces. And another way to say that is that it's profitable for shareholders. Right. So that that's the main, or the, that's one of the main selling points of .p2p. The other one is that uh, we claim to be able to, uh, if not solve, at least greatly help the domain squatting uh, problem, which is a problem both in traditional DNS and in at least dot bits or uh, Namecoin and dot bit, uh, they have domain squatting as a problem. Also, Ethereum, they want to do something like honor existing domain name holders and sort of take a snapshot of the existing DNS and stick it on a blockchain, which is a different approach and not exactly what we're doing. That does sound quite clever, but I suppose it still brings the uh, the squatters along with it, doesn't it? So yeah, and uh, how we how we want to solve the uh, the sort of land rush problem, how with dot bit in the first couple of months, someone came in, wrote a script, you know, got help all the good domains. Um, how we want how we want to solve that is by uh, well, first we examine what why does domain squatting happen at all? It happens because people want to make a profit off of the, the 
the value of the namespace increasing. They, they want to be able to buy a domain for cheap and sell it for much more later. Well, the thing is you don't know in advance which, which name is going to be extremely valuable. Uh, so, but some, one of them is going to hit and uh, pay off for all the rest. So the expected return on an individual name is much higher than the price. But for you to be able to consistently profit, you have to buy a ton of domains and sort of sit on them all and not let anyone else use them until you get your money back from selling one or two of them. So how we fix this is we want to make, we want to incentivize people not to squat. We want to make it more profitable to not be a squatter than to be a squatter. So this happens by a combination of two things. The first is there's price discovery for names. So names are expensive. They're worth what they're actually worth. And the other is that there uh, are dividends for name shares. So if you're holding the, the crypto equity, you're, you're making income from all the other domain sales. Uh, but if you have a domain that you traded it for, then you're not making, uh, you're not getting dividends on that value of name shares. Uh, and so this is sort of a way of squatting without actually taking other people's uh, domains out from under them. You're basically uh, getting a share of everyone's, of all the domains that get sold for the market price. I guess the next question I have, Nikolai, is what hurdles stand in between uh, DDNS and mainstream adoption? Well, I actually just think it's, um, I think it's just ease of use. It's it's really not, if, if, if we... So if, if the if browsers or like if the existing DNS infrastructure for some reason wanted to uh, you know download our client and, and use it to resolve TCP domain name, names, people wouldn't have to do anything. They'd have to be able to instantly access it. The problem is that they have uh, the existing DNS infrastructure is sort of like locked in, and uh, they don't they don't really play nice with people trying to do their own thing underneath them. So what we have to do is basically people have to opt into our system. And what that means is they either have to manually configure their browser to point to uh, custom DNS servers, which have um, our P2P client on them, running on them. Uh, they can also, what we're hoping to do, is actually make a browser extension, which one of the things it'll do is resolve P2P domains, but we'll make it attractive and make people actually want to get it by having it incorporate, um, well, more useful stuff. I won't talk about it too much now, but those are the two main approaches. Just have people opt in, manually configure something, or have them install a browser extension. Hey, so what does it look like from the server side? Is it uh, is it particularly complicated to to deploy on that end? It's really it's really not. It's really quite simple. Um, so there's already uh, there's a we're working with a guy who wrote. Uh, software called DNS Chain, which was originally written for Namecoin, but now is generalized for any blockchain that does TLD resolution. Um, and it's really not that big of a, I mean, he, just one guy wrote it like in a couple months, it looks like. Uh, and that's sort of, so, so here, here's the setup process. You get a new VPS, like you, get, you have a computer, you install DNS Chain on it, you install a .p2p client on it, you run them both, and then uh, that's your new DNS server. You point your browser at, at that, and that's it. So it's really as simple as uh, taking, you know, in, uh, taking a DNS lookup request, seeing if it's about P2P. If it is, look at the blockchain. If it's not, look at the old system. That sounds like that would be uh, really easily integratable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you just have to slightly go out of the way. Like there, there's this just minor inconvenience that, uh, um, you know, browsers by default. Or actually, I don't. Yeah, I, th I think, I think it's not unreasonable to assume that we could actually convince people who host real DNS servers to start um, hosting, you know, our P2P nodes. Uh, once, you know, if if there's enough momentum of people installing their own DNS servers just to get access to it. Presuming the success of .p2p or one of these other DDNS implementations. How will that change the experience of the internet for the average person? Well, this, the the biggest difference is that you're not going to have, or, or the biggest user visible difference is you, you're not going to have domain seizures, which means that the, the regular internet is going to look much scarier, I think. Yeah. 
but also uh, you um, there's going to be more of an emphasis on people. So if you, if you go to uh, bitshares.p2p or whatever, norm, normally when you go to bitshares.org uh, and you connect through HTTPS, uh, your browser will basically look at the certificate that it gets from the domain name server and then check uh, check that it's signed by a trusted certificate authority. And if it is, you connect, right? Um, but under .p2p, the whole point is that we don't need these certificate authorities anymore. But that places a greater uh, impetus on the user to actually make sure that bitshares.p2p does indeed belong to BitShares Foundation and that, uh, you know, so, so like, it, like you have no guarantee that google.p2p actually belongs to Google. And then if all the certificates are all self-signed because there's no certificate any authorities anymore. I don't know if you've, if you've tried to access like namecoin.info's wiki, Wikipedia page, or not Wikipedia, their, their wiki. Um, it'll, the, your browser will give you like this yellow warning. It's not, it's not like this red warning that you see where it's like some, sometimes where it's a bad certificate. It's a yellow one and it says this is self-signed. That doesn't mean it's insecure. That just means you have to, instead of trusting the old um, authorities who basically checked everyone, you have to actually trust the person who you're connecting to. Um, so there's going to be much more of a, I think we're going to see some, some better infrastructure for like web of trust style um, uh, identity verification. I presume that's easily implemented though, right? Yeah, so, right. So, so an important point actually is that certificate authorities actually play two roles. Uh, one is, uh, you know, signing off on their certificate, and the other is making sure the certificate belongs to the real world identity. We kind of eliminate the need for one of those two things, but the other one is still a need that needs to be uh, done. If it's not going to be done by certificate authorities anymore, uh, like th that's a separate blockchain. Uh, we're separating those roles explicitly. Can you shed any light on what we might expect to see from that direction? Well. Yeah, so there's many decentralized identity efforts, and that's a whole different topic um, from .pcp, right? So, so uh, what, one of the one of the reasons we're doing only a top level domain on the first blockchain is because the supply demand characteristics and like the use cases for a top level domain are uh, very specific, different from a lot of other namespaces, and like pretty easy to reason about. Um, we're going to have to carefully look at all the different uh, identity approaches and consider their trade-offs, sort of do that as a separate effort, I think. Okay. Let me ask an unfair question. How long do you think it will take for these services to be adopted? And who do you think will be the first parties to really utilize these new tools that you're developing? Uh, I think how it has to happen <coughs> is that the first people that will be using uh, these decentralized uh, domain name systems will be uh, sites and services that actually need it. So for example, uh, the Pirate Bay has all of its US-based domain seized. So there's no thepiratebay.com, there's no thepiratebay.org, etc. Um, so they're probably going to be really excited about, uh, you know, registering the piratebay.pcp and then saying on their site, like, hey, you can access us now at the spot without any risk of spying. Uh, and, you know, you can access all these other cool .pcp sites. And it's going to, there's going to be sort of a tipping point where it becomes cool, sort of, because all these, like, edgy uh, sites that have to run away from government seizures are doing it, which is kind of what happened with Bitcoin, right? Like. It originally got popular with people selling drugs to each other over the internet. And yeah. that so convincingly demonstrated its utility and its advantages that it caught on. Uh, so you're asking for a time frame, and I think, so I think if we optimistically, I say so in, the, in the summer we, P2P is launched and, and going and we start advertising it really hard to all the people that need it. I shouldn't. I shouldn't sit. I shouldn't give the pirate bay as an example. If people will be pushing to, we'll also be pushing to like, uh, you know, like uh, all the sites that are promoting privacy and security. 
Um, and then I think once, once, probably like within one year of us, of the first couple of serious third parties adopting it, there's going to be a, a sort of rush where it's the cool new thing. And, and because, because, uh, uh, because there's no, because of this auction thing where it's not just the first person to get there, you have to like buy it from a global market. I think that'll also sort of make it more, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It sounds to me like what you envision is a kind of piecemeal William Gibson, a, the street will find a use for things kind of adoption trend. A, am I on the right track with that? Yeah, def yeah definitely. Uh, and especially, uh, I think that the, um, the user adoption, you, you know, there's, there's two parts. There's, uh, what is the adoption going to look like for people who are buying domains? And then what is the adoption for people who are configuring their browser to be able to go to those websites? Getting that browser support seems to me to be the really big barrier that, uh, that needs to be overcome to encourage adoption. Yeah, it's really that. Like, uh, w my, my dream is like, uh, .ptp.io at the very top will have a big button, big red button. That's a one click browser extension install. I know at least in Chrome, you can do like a one click, you click it and then it goes to a separate screen where you have to press accept. You press accept and it's installed right there. So like a two click install is like the best we can do basically in, until we get either browser vendors or the existing DNS infrastructure on board. You know, Nikolai, I did read that the Pirate Bay were implementing some method to resolve domain names based on Bitcoin in their pirate browser. Uh, it's certainly possible. So I think they, I, I don't know too much, so I might be wrong, but I think it's, they are basically just building their own little version of what we're doing inside Bitcoin's blockchain. Uh, so it's just like, I think dot bit, but like on Bitcoin. But I'm not, again, I'm not totally sure, but, but, uh, yes, it could totally integrate with anything they're doing. In fact, it would be completely effortless because I think their Pyre browser currently does let you access dot com or whatever. Uh, so, oh yeah. So by default, you know, all the brow, all they would have to do is add one of the, DNS servers that supports .ptp by default in their Pyre browser, and then yeah, you can access uh, PTP directly. So the question is, okay, which is more, which is more of a hurdle for the average user, downloading a special browser or doing a browser extension installation on their existing one? What about internet censorship in the UK, for example? So if, if it's simple, just DNS, uh, you know, they they block certain domains or whatever then yes, this completely circumvents that and you can't do anything like that. Um, they could do something like where they just, this is like getting really tyrannical, but if they just do like deep packet inspection at every, all, you know, every major node, internet node in their country, they can literally just filter specific traffic. Like, okay, we know that they're, we're not just seizing their domain, we know their actual IP address of their server and any connection that's trying to connect to that server, that's clear text, we're just going to block it. Hopefully that's not something we have to worry about anytime soon. Uh, whereabouts is the project now, Nikolai, and how do you see it progressing? So the, sh the short version is that the DNS is quote unquote ready, but there we want to do it right and make sure that we're going we're gonna to take the time and we'd rather learn from what happens with the XT launch than launching anytime sooner. So where should people go to find out more about the projects you're working on, Nikolai? The two, the, the two places you should go to are bitshares.org, which is the parent project, which has all the different bitshares projects. And then uh, my project, which is .p2p, uh, is at .p2p.io, so .dotp2p.io. And then the BitShares DNS pro sort of parent project of .p2p subproject of BitShares.org is at BitShares.org slash domains. Right, right now, uh, .p2p and BitShares.org slash domains point to the same thing, and all of the sites I just mentioned are all works in progress. Hey, thanks, Nikolai. It's been great talking to you. I look forward to seeing how all these things progress. Okay, great. See ya. That's it for the first episode of Beyond Bitcoin. If you'd like to discuss today's interview, head over to our subreddit, Beyond Bitcoin Show. Also, I'd love to hear any feedback or advice you guys have about any aspect of this show. It's the first podcast, it's the first interview I've ever done. 
and there are all manner of wrinkles to be ironed out. It helps to have someone point them out for you. Thanks again to Nikolai and to the guys in Yoke and Trajayu for the music. Take it easy, folks. Thank you.